in Pit Lane, brought to you by Online Invent, and with thanks to our Platinum Star Patreon supporters. Once again to another edition of In Pit Lane coming to you across Melbourne on Channel 31 and across the In Pit Lane YouTube channel coming up this week. Boy, have we got a line-up for you this weekend. We're going to catch up with supercar driver Jackson Evans in a little bit later on in the program. We're also going to catch up with George Medecki and also the, uh, we mentioned him last week, our guest Clay Richards mentioned uh, his sponsor, the uh, internationally famous DJ Carl Cox. He's going to join us a little bit later on in the program as well. We caught up with him at Phillip Island as well. Great guy. We'll see him there. Also tonight, our special in-studio guest is Matt Basso. He's competing this weekend up at the Eastern Lions Kart Circuit in uh, just out of Seymour for the Australian Karting Championships. Massive, massive turnout of over 400 entries for the weekend, and we'll be talking to him about that a little bit later. But it was a, a big weekend at Phillip Island. Uh, we, we enjoyed ourselves on the day we went down, didn't we? Certainly did on the Friday. It was great. great. We great. said we'd catch up with Carl Cox, and, well, stay tuned for it, because we did, and he gave us a lot of info, and he, great guys. Well yeah, too. just got a little bit tonight, a little bit. Yeah, just, yeah <laughs> stay tuned, because there'll be more on the way. Hey, speaking of what we did down at the island, let's show you some of that now. As we uh, check out what happened around, Australia with the in pit lane motorsport news. So it, it's not that hard, really. A good fields, a packed program of racing, a little bit of pre-event publicity, and you can still attract a good crowd to grassroots racing. A record three-day crowd made the long trip down to Phillip Island for last weekend's Race Phillip Island, third round of the Speed Series. Trans Am, TCR, Porsches and Radicals all attracted good fields and provided plenty of entertaining racing. But the big attraction was the return of GT Racing to the island and the local debut of two very special cars. They make all Sandown the home of horsepower, but Phillip Island had a particularly equine theme last weekend. The GT World Challenge Australia saw the long-awaited return of Ferrari to the series with two new 296 GT3 cars run by the Perth-based Arise Racing for Liam Talbot and Elliot Shute along with their pro drivers, supercar stars Chas Mostert and Jackson Evans. Uh, it's amazing to have the Ferrari 296 here with the Rise Racing GT and you know I think it's uh, it's awesome to see them on the grid but uh, it's even better to be driving one and it's, uh, it's such a special feeling you know we're all here and in the red the iconic Ferrari red but uh, you know been a pleasure so far and uh, really enjoying my time. Uh, it's a beautiful car to drive and it's something that we're still all starting to learn about and uh, understand its its electronics and things like that but uh, you know with the turbo powered engine and things like that it's something new for me um, but no, really enjoying it. A lot of things to change, a lot of uh, setup improvements, I think, from the previous generation. But uh, yeah, no, plenty, plenty going on behind the wheel as well. But uh, such a pleasure to drive. The meeting also saw the Australian debut of the new GT4 Mustang. Built by Multimatic in Canada, the car only arrived in Australia last week, but it was instantly competitive here in the hands of Ryland Gray and George Medecki. Yeah, I love it, mate. It's uh, as you say, we only uh, had a, we had a few shipping delays, and it only cleared customs on Monday afternoon. So we've been hard at work, um, but uh, we feel like we're getting there. You know, we had a couple of little teething issues, at, um, some bodywork, and, and a little bit of a stuck throttle in first practice. But other than that, it's absolutely run like a top, mate. So we're very, very excited. Well, one of the things about GT4, I mean, we know a GT3 full-on, you know, full-on racing cars, very sophisticated. 
a lot of people say, oh, GT4, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're basically just, you know, hotted up production cars, but I've had a look at that thing. That is not a hotted up production car. How sophisticated are these cars? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. There's, a, there's been a big jump in a, gener a generational leap in GT4. You know, the first uh, Mustang was very much a hotted up production car. The first Porsche Cayman, very much the same. Um, and now we're seeing these Gen 2 cars come through. You're right. That is a baby GT3 car. You know, all of the driver aids, the adjustments, all that sort of stuff are very familiar to me from, from my time in GT3. So, yeah, it's it's a to be honest, it's it's 99 percent of the fun with about half the half the uh, the budget, and and I couldn't be happier. It was a great debut for both new cars, with victories for them both in their first local race on Saturday. The Mustang won both races for the weekend, appropriate considering the meeting was sponsored by Ford to celebrate 60 years of the Mustang brand. The Ferrari had issues in the second race after a pit stop that dropped the lead car back in the pack. Both cars, however, are very welcome additions to the growing ranks of top-level GT racing down under. Glorious machinery. In other races at the island, James Golding came out on top in Trans Am, sharing race wins with Nash Morris and James Moffat. Brad Harris took out the TCR round as Honda returned to the winner's circle. Ben Barguana and last week's guest on in-pit lane, Clay Richards, rounded out the podium. Chas Mostert and Liam Talbot tied for first with the New Zealand pair of Brad Leith and Tim Miles in the GT World Challenge Australia. Well, it was, was a three-way tie in the Porsche Sprint Cup between Caleb Sumich, and yes, he is related to that man from West Coast, Brock Gilchrist and Oscar Target. Peter Patton and Cooper Cut shared a win each in the Radicals to leave the island tied on points. And it was a big weekend of action overseas. Let's check, just check out a little bit of it in the in-pit lane international wrap. A win to cool racing in round one of the European Le Mans series in Barcelona. The team of Lorenzo Fluxa, Ritomo Miata and Malte Jacobson claimed the win after a race-long fight with the Algarve racing team. It was a dramatic end in GT3 after the race-leading Iron Dames team retired late in the race after a wheelnut problem following a pit stop. This handed victory to Formula Racing and a Ferrari 1-2. A big weekend for Toyota in the opening round of the Super GT as the Tom's Toyota GR Super of Sho Subai and Kenta Yamashita won Sunday's Yokohama GT 300km race at the Yokohama's International Circuit. Toyota also won in GT 300 with a win for Muta Racing in the Toyota GR86 with Yui Tatsumi and Hibiki Tayara. And in our Jure Drag Racing, Bob Tasker, the third, recorded just the third triple hole shot win in the NHRA Drag Racing Series history on Sunday at the Strip in Las Vegas Motor Speedway, picking up his second career four-wide victory at the 24th annual NHRA Four-Wide Nationals. Doug Kalitta took the win in top fuel. Jed Coglin Jr. won pro stock. You're watching In Pit Lane. When we come back, we're going to be joined by our special guest, guest, Matt Basso. Also coming up on the program a little bit later on, internationally famous DJ Carl Cox. This is In Pit Lane. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Get the phone ringing for your business with website development and SEO services from Online Invent. Visit onlineinvent.com.au. Yes, once again, a huge thank you to Online Invent for their support of In Pit Lane. As we say every week, without the support of sponsors and, of course, our Patreon supporters as well, the program simply can't exist. As I've said before, we, we, get, no, we get no financial support from any governments or anybody else. Basically, it is really the support of people like Roy and Online Invent uh, who, who keep the, the program on the air. Without them, we simply couldn't do the show at all. So if you're enjoying the show at all, um, say thank you to uh, Online Invent and also, if you're looking to get any uh, any computer work done, any design work, if you're looking for any computer marketing, SEO, or anything like that, make sure that you are uh, make sure you talk to our friends at Online Invent. They do a great job. They've been around for a long time now here in Melbourne. They're a local company, and also if you're in the the motorsport industry, well, then you're talking to people who you know understand the sport and have a real passion for the sport as well. So remember, Online Invent. Check out their uh, check out their website and have a look at what they can do for your 
business and for your uh, your company with something called SEO, which Doc stands for Search Engine Optimization. Of we've course all, it we've does. learnt something for the week. That's the homework. I done. thought it was Sex Education Officer, but there you go. That messes that messes me up. So, so anyway. I'm just not going to go anywhere near that. Speaking of sex safe. education. It's not safe. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. So it goes together like whatever. Tonight we've got some rock and roll because our band tonight is oh, the Dirty Rats. They can be found playing at Zait's Bar in South Morang on the 19th of April, which is this Friday actually, and their albums are Rock and Roll, End in Tears and Live at the Bendigo. That's available through Slip Trick Records and at major music outlets. You can also follow them on Spotify but right now they're here to play us with a bonus song. This is the Dirty Rats with Love from a Distance. Back to in pit lane. Well, as everybody knows, it doesn't really matter you know, what level of motorsport you're at nowadays. The one thing that all drivers seem to have in common is they all got their start in karting. Whether it's Formula One, whether it's sports car racing, supercars, it doesn't matter. Basically, everybody these days got their start in karting. Coming up this weekend up at uh, Seymour at the Eastern Lions track is the Australian Karting Championships. Over 400 entries. It's going to be absolutely huge karting and entrants from all over Australia, even international entrants as well. One of those entrants joining us tonight on the program is a local youngster called Matt, um, Matt Basso, and he's going to uh, tell us all about uh, the world of karting and his world of karting, also about his uh, work on social media as well, which is something interesting too. Matt, welcome to Inpit Lane. Thank you for having me on the show. Now, this is, let's talk about this weekend first of all. I mean, this is, this is big, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big weekend, as you said, 400 plus entries, uh, round two of the Australian Kart Championship. 
Um, the team and I have been putting in a lot of effort into the car and uh, we, should, uh, we should have a good result this weekend. So what, uh, what category are you in? I'm in KFE Junior, um, very big category, um, I think s over 70 entries. Um, so yeah, Do you have to break that up into different heats, being 70, or you can all get on the same track at the same time? That's no, like yeah, you have to break it up into a couple groups um, and then heats. Uh, and then you have to qualify for the final, essentially. Yeah. I also had a look at the, speaking of that, I had a look at the, the timetable. Like, you don't have a lot of time in terms of practice and qualifying and all that. It, people say, oh, you know, 20 minutes is not long to, to practice. You've got even less time to... Yeah. Uh, how packed is it? I mean, how packed is the schedule? It's very, very packed, very quick. We have uh, a certain amount of break in between sessions, but uh, the sessions like practice go for maybe eight to 12 minutes. Um, races go from 12 to 16 laps. Um, and the final can range from 16 to 20 laps. You mentioned uh, your category. How does, that, how does it work? And sometimes it can be a bit confusing. Into, you're in KA3? Yeah, KA3. KA3. So is, is that, the next... That's heavy too, isn't it? Uh, no, nah, just KA3 Junior. Well, there are heavy and light classes. Yeah. But for nationals, it's just essentially one, uh, one class. Right. And uh, the weight is essentially just right in the middle. Because you competed in the KA3 Junior, junior heavy. heavy last. September and got the championship, didn't you? Uh, yep, sure did. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, uh, it was a tough weekend. Where was it at? It was at uh, Aubrey. Right. Yep, um, but uh, we did really well that weekend and uh, ended up securing the um, Victorian Kart Championship. And how many? How, how, how do you go about a whole year that like how many different events did you see? there? Three or four different places to go to, and and you know you have to compete in them all. Is it you know, is there big fields in the whole lot? Um, for states, it's it's a one-off event. Um, multiple races. Um, there are many other series spread out through throughout the country, but um, uh, states is just one-off events. You know. Uh, you heat some races and then a final, and whoever wins the final is the state champion. And hotly contested. So yeah. what's uh, what car, what club are you you with? I'm with the Oakley Go Kart Racing Club. So mm -hmm. in Oakley, um, and uh, yeah, it's a great club. They have a lot of members, and it's a good track. Well, it just is, yeah, so it certainly is a good track now. I mean, yeah. they spent a lot of uh, sort of money, and they've just done some more modifications. Yeah, yeah. To, to to make it even better, better again. Yeah. So while we're on the carts, anyway, before we jump onto the other stuff, because we haven't got long, we would love to speak to you all night. Uh, how would if like you've just obviously been in the cart since you're about eight, been driving electric, muck Seven. around one since yeah, yeah, since you were four and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So you're right in the in the immersed in it right now. How who what would you recommend the pathway to someone a couple of years younger than you since you've just experienced it all? How would you go about it? Um, I definitely invest. Uh, I definitely go to the Junior Sprockets Karting Australia program. It's basically a program where for young amateur. Uh, people wanting to get into motorsport and want to get into karting, you just um, go in, give a test. If you like it, they teach you all about braking, turning, accelerating lines, all of it. Um, and if you enjoy it, you know, you buy a go-kart and start racing. It's really fun. So what's your pathway through now? You're in KA3, I suppose KA2 is there. Is that the way it works, K2? What's, what's the... What's the category? What's the Formula One of local karting? Um, it's got to be KZ2. That's the senior class. It's a shifter kart. Um, you actually have to have like an A grade license to um, compete in it, which means you have to place a uh, top three in a state event um, from juniors upwards. There. And uh, we mentioned, of course, your the, the social media thing. Because that's how you sort of, you know, we came to know uh, know about you. Is a lot of people said, yeah, well, this guy's got so many. How many sort of, you know, social media followers do you have, and how much time, and how important is it to put in that time with the social media? Yeah, I have uh, thirteen thousand followers on Instagram. Um, my family and I help out a real lot to um. To, if it's posting, if it's making a video, if it's a funny post. We also have, uh, are on TikTok. Um, we have, I think, 83,000 followers on there. We post lots of funny videos on there. And um, yeah, it's Facebook great page fun. too as well? Facebook page as well. We have 1,000 followers on there. Crazy. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really great fun. And um, yeah, it helps, uh, helps people to get to know me really.
And I was going to say, and I, I was look, had a quick look at Instagram before because, as you said, that seems to be the most popular. I'm not sure whether it's TikTok. You, you, you can tell me which is which these days. But um, I saw a post back a few years ago. I think it was 2019. You were hanging out with Valtteri Bottas as well, yeah. though, too. Did you steal his hair? Because he's got none now, <laughs> and you've got more than what you did as well. Though. How much fun was it meeting a Valtteri? It was great fun. He's a great guy. Um, he made me a cappuccino, too, which is funny. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Kidding. He's just an Aussie boat. Isn't he these yeah. days? Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Made you a coffee. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to make one in a few years' time for him as well too. Yeah. So, what are the long-term plans? Um, the path isn't really quite clear. It's very expensive getting into yeah. cars, but um, any professional racing would be great. For my dream would be just to be a professional race car driver. If it's racing in Europe, if it's racing in Australia, if it's over in America somewhere, just to be racing professionally and you know doing racing as my job that would be just the dream now if people want to catch up with you on social media where do they go uh, how do they get in touch with you um get in touch with matthew basso racing um that's on all platforms if it's instagram uh facebook or TikTok. Um, chuck me a follow, um, and if you want to message me or get to know me or have any questions uh just yeah you can message me message me direct well, good luck uh, coming up on the weekend. It is going to be an absolutely huge weekend up there. So yeah. if you're anywhere up in that area, head up to uh, the Eastern Lions track uh, just outside of Seymour. And, uh, and, and when you're there, catch up with Matt and say hi. So let him know that you saw him on in pit lane. Matt, stay with us for the moment. Thank you for the moment. Thank Thanks you. for joining us in pit lane. We're going to take a break now on the program. When we come back, we're going to catch up with international, internationally famous DJ Carl Cox and our band, The Dirty Rats, are going to join us. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Get the phone ringing for your business with website development and SEO services from Online Invent. Visit onlineinvent.com.au. Yes, once again, once again, uh, once again, thank you to uh, online event. Also, our Patreon crew as well. If you'd like to support us and uh, help us there, it, it look, you know, the, the, it's a little bit here and there. It's from as little as four dollars a month, so a dollar a week. That's all good. If we could get like a you know, hundred, two hundred people to give us a dollar a week, well, that'd be two hundred dollars we don't have now. It'd help pay for the for the catering and all the rest of it. We would really appreciate. Or so more footage of Philip Bowen on the weekend. More for more footage. Well, we, yes, because because we only went on the one day because that's basically all we could afford. So um, so we went down on the Friday and we had fun and you'll, you'll catch up with, uh, as I said, with Carl Cox gonna, a little bit later. you're going to do some extended stuff for that and put it up on YouTube? Like yes, we've got, as I said, if you want to see, we'll have uh, extended uh, extended interviews with Jackson Evans, with uh, uh, with George Medecki and also with Carl Cox. Carl Cox, it's a very, very extended... <laughs> Um, they're the, the guy. Um, the guy. Once he starts talking about motorsport, he's a very, very passionate oh, supporter. Oh, he, he, the... he, he talks about his days in English. He, English back over in the UK. He talks about on bikes as well, though, too. So he's got some, uh, got some great stuff and in depth, uh, in depth. I suppose yeah, thoughts yeah. on the on the, we'll, on the we'll, thing, we'll but talk, Jackson was yeah. really good as well though too because I hadn't met Jackson before and he's doing a lot of things around the countryside and back over in New Zealand. So uh, yeah, keep an eye on him. Maybe follow or however he does his social media stuff. Yeah, and of course he'll be in action at uh, at at. Uh Topol uh, yeah. coming up uh, this week, this weekend as well. Coming up, Nick, or yes, you're coming up this weekend at uh, Topol. So um, yeah, f follow uh, Jackson, and we'll uh, we'll run that a little Just bit quickly, later. Just quickly, you on got to sit in a well. Porsche on the weekend, didn't you? I, I think. Did. Uh, Aston Martin. Oh, you got to sit in the Aston Martin. Yeah. Did you? How cool was that? Uh, it was really cool, actually. Like the cars. Really cool. Um, which, which one was it? The yellow and or was it that blue green, one that green, was hiding the out one? the back? Uh, I think it might have been the green one. The green one. The yeah, green yeah, one. Yeah, the yeah. green one. The track one. Because yeah. we just were wandering around. And we sort of walked around the corner and we went, "Hang on, what's that?" And just hidden away. Just and Aston Martin. Yeah. Go, sorry, sorry. GT3. Just back to three. Aston Martin GT3 was jammed in between a motorhome, a transporter, and anything other rubbish you could find around the back. But we just saw this speck of blue in the corner and went. Okay, right, yeah. so they're hide, they're, someone's hiding a GT3 behind, so, yeah. I've might have been a spare the car things, for the weekend. Isn't it? I mean, you know, for, for someone like you, the, the, the boom in sports car racing at the moment does open up a lot of opportunities. I mean, um, you know, we saw before the... the, the uh, European Le Mans series. We've got the, all the different GT series around the around Australia, around the world. They're, they're just absolutely everywhere now. So is that something you, you you'd be interested in? in uh, one hundred percent. That would just be 
incredible to be in one of those one of those types of motorsport, one of those... Um, Other national outlay that's probably cheaper to run one of those around than a supercar or even a super two. Oh, it's what weight, yes, certainly that. But the, 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 the beauty of that, as we've said before, with GT, with GT3 and GT4 now, but as another option, is, you know, for, like, for, for young guys like, you know, even young competitors like Matt, it, it is an option now because a lot of, you know, richer, sort of, you know, older guys... Um, you know, get they buy the cars they need someone to drive with so they get a young you know driver one to be competitive and two yeah. to help teach them well you've got the different categories you've got bronze category you've got amateur pro-am oh, every, 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 every kitty wins, every a, prize. Every and, wins oh, a prize and oh and it's yeah exactly we need mark Torbett and bear back on the show with these with these uh well i heard with, from with, i heard from with, mark with, and mark yeah. and bear that they, they might be making an appearance bear, bear has been in touch uh, bear has been bear in has touch? been in touch he's, 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 he's suffering a bit from you know sort of withdrawal Symptoms well, at the moment. we better get him out because it's coming symptoms. up to winter and he might be hibernating. So he we might better get him. We better so get him get in. Bear back. <laughs> however, however, get um, bear back again. It's um, yeah, it's it's down there. I was going to say, TCRs were fantastic as well too. All the categories were great, yeah. and that seems to be a bit of a pathway. You have got the Toyota 86s at the moment. You could probably look at down the track after you know, and and the TCRs. You got a good blend, a lot of young guys that are coming into TCR as well though too, and it's really hotly yeah. contested. Mm. Yeah, it was it was a good week. It was a good weekend down there. We we had a, we had a ball, and it was obviously a lot of ponies good, too. Yeah, they got a really uh, they got a really good turnout on the on the weekend too. Six. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, if you watched watch the program last week, you remember our guests Elliot Barber and of course Clay Richards. Clay, uh, of course, uh, is sponsored now by Carl Cox Motorsport. And in case you're wondering, if you're not into sort of dance music or anything like that. Carl Cox is one of the biggest DJs in the world. He was playing at uh, he was playing at St Kilda, I think at the Katani Gardens on uh, on Saturday night. He was in town, but he was also when he wasn't playing at uh, wasn't playing at St Kilda, he was down at Phillip Island. He came down on the on the Friday and also went back on the Sunday as well. And while we were there, we had the opportunity of catching up with uh, with Carl. We're going to show you the full interview on the Impit Lane YouTube channel because he speaks about all sorts of wonderful things. But right now, let's catch up with uh, Carl Cox and we found out about how we, he we became interested in the world of motorsport. I have to say, I mean, you know, coming from the UK, I was always very uh, much uh, into, obviously, race cars, race, race uh, motorcycles, sidecar racing, Isle of Man TT, the list goes on, you know. And, and where I lived in a, in a place called Carshorton, uh, which is um, in South London, uh, the closest track at that particular time uh, was um, Brands Hatch. And then um, obviously Goodwood and, and Silverstone. So any racer that was coming from any any one of those places, I was always able to go there and watch the racing. So for me, I was really kind of like as a child, I was when I was going to all these places to see the racing. I was always really excited about it, but I, I, I really find it hard just to sit there and watch the races. It, now I'm in a position to help others, and, and now to be a part of it all, and now I feel it even more so. Now, you're not just sponsoring cars and bikes around the world. I mean, you're also behind the wheel yourself. You were at the, uh, at the dragway at the, at the bend last weekend, uh, driving your, uh, your Capri, but that's not the only drag car you've got, is it? Tell us about, uh, tell us about the Capri and tell us about uh, the, the other cars you've got that we might see in Australia eventually. Well, the Mark 1 Capri uh, 1973 was the first kind of race car that I had in the UK. And again, living where I, where I, where I was at the South London, the premier racetrack in the UK is Santa Pod Raceway, Northamptonshire. So I used to go down there with my old cars and just basically run what I brung. And the Capri eventually, which used to, we were, at that time was like 90 pounds uh, for, for a V6 3 litre, was the car that I used to race. A bit more expensive now. <laughs> A lot more <laughs> expensive now, but I came back. I came to Australia, met met quite a few really good people who are into their cars as well, and and uh, I found myself just getting drawn back into drag racing again. And the Capri was the first car. That so I was, where did the Capri come from? Where, what's its history? So the history was was that the, the car was was a project car from Sydney, which was going to be a nitrous big block car. Uh, so I kind of. In the midst of where it was going to go, um, it, it, I kind of interjected that, and then we had um, Joe Gauchi from uh, Profab uh, for Wollongong and and um, Frank uh, Marchese from uh, Dandy Engines. They worked really closely together with fabrication and also with, with engineering and the engines and gearboxes. And they he asked me how fast I want to go, and I said, well, a little bit quicker than 10 seconds. I said, well, we're going to build you a six-second car at over 200 miles an hour, and I thought they were absolutely crazy. 
but I had walked into the idea of, of running the car that fast eventually. Uh, it took about four or five years to actually get comfortable with that. But now, you know, straight off the back, I can run that car at 680 seconds at uh, 207 miles an hour. But we are looking to go faster with this new setup that we have from a single turbo now to a twin turbo. And so I was running the, the car at the bend a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we run a 7.3 at uh, 193 mile an hour, but we had to walk the, the car into those speeds. And unfortunately, I did hurt the engine. But I'm going to go back out uh, to, uh, to Sydney Dragway in a couple of weeks and race the car again at a thing called a Jamboree. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I went to my drag cars. I've actually bought, uh, to go faster, two Pro Mod cars from the States. Uh, one of them is, uh, is a Cuda, a 1971 Cuda shape. And one's in Santa Pod Raceway at the moment. So when I go back to Europe, I, I can race that car there. And the other car has just, just been built, a Jerry Brickle uh, chassis uh, Pro Mod. It's incredible, beautiful looking car and everything, and I'm looking to roll that out for, uh, for our racing season uh, at the end of this year. And uh, I actually have bought a rail car as well. Uh, we're going to actually, uh, for the, for, I think we're going to be the only ones with uh, a Proline engine with uh, and running a Procharger with that. And so hopefully that goes into a new category called Supercharged Outlaws on IHRA. Yeah, as you can see, the man is a, a, a motorsport tragic. He's a, and a lovely guy as well, really friendly. Terrific guy, wasn't he? He, was, he had lots of fun with the Absolutely with crazy. Yeah. And listen to his plans. He's just absolutely fully focused yeah. on just we will, uh, we will run doors. We will run that uh, in full on the Input Lane YouTube channel uh, very, very soon as well. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us tonight. Now to take us out tonight, it's time for music. And, our, and playing us out tonight is the band The Dirty Rats. You can look out for their albums, Rock and Roll, End in Tears, and Live at the Bendigo. That's available through uh, Slip Trick Records. And it's available at all major music outlets. You can also follow them on Spotify. And they're also going to be playing tomorrow, if you're watching us on Channel 31, Friday the 19th of April at uh, the Zeitz Bar in South Morang. But right now, to take us out this week on In Pit Lane, here is the Dirty Rats with... Something dedicated to driving on the Monash Freeway. This is Parking Bay Blues. Good night. I'm not the